Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today we're looking at the bottomless pit of Anycubic's latest 3D printer, which is the Anycubic Cobra Neo. It seems like they have an abundance of new releases that are coming out almost weekly. We've just had the Go, then we had the Plus, then we had the Max, and before that, of course, then we had the Cobra Standard and the Viper, of course, before that. So make sure you keep it logged in, hit that subscribe button, chuck us a little like i'm really impressed with this 3d printer so i'm really really keen to get this video done and out and published so you can go out and buy this yourselves the discount codes will be below any comments also go down below as well so let's get straight on into this one here we go you are watching a master at work if you've been looking to start out in 3D printing, I suspect there have been an abundance of concerns around which printer should I buy? Am I making the right decision, value for money, and will I get the support required to enjoy my time inside this space? Needless to say, the answer is, well, complicated. And many over the years, when looking to buy a 3D printer, tend to go for the Ender 3 or Ender 3 style 3D printer. Why? Well, because they're affordable, easy to work on, and deliver on more than fair print quality, which is why you see countless Ender of three clothes inside of this market. The Ender 3 was actually released in 2018, so in 2022, what can we expect from the grand range of budget-friendly, easy-to-use 3D printers that also add advancements to the original idea? Anycubic have been working hard inside of this marketplace with their latest machines, the Cobra Go and the Cobra Neo. Building from a much established brand name, delivering a surprise number of 3D printers inside the last two years. So here we have the Neo, and let's get the name choice dealt with as Creality Ender Neo was launched in August this year also. It seemingly has an accidental name clash. However, where the machine shares the name part, size and delivery, Anycubic's offering, which in my opinion looks aesthetically pleasing, the key price points, the user experience is, well, going to be the deciding factor. And the good news here is that the Anycubic Cobra Neo is no slouch. With an inductive probe for auto bed leveling, a new redesigned hot end and direct driven extrusion system, you are set up for printing a wide range of materials. The build volume, well, unsurprisingly, is 220 by 220 by 250. And it's set in with a dual coated PEI flexible build plate so you can print on either side. The nozzle will get up to heat of 260 degrees with the bed tops out at 110. The 32-bit Trigorilla board offers silent operation which actually led me to believe that I had to check on the printer a few times to make sure it was still printing. The printer comes with the usual range of tools and the SD card comes with the very over familiar OWL.STL and I really wish that Anycubic would be a little bit more dynamic with their offering on these test prints. And let's face it, the OWL is going Going to be ending up in the bin post print over on their website where you can pick up this brand spanking new printer for a cool 249 dollars or less using the links below any cubic do a great job here at keeping the current firmware available on their website so i downloaded the proximity g code file which is also on their website and this is for calibration of the lev iq sensor should you need to calibrate that at any point in time so the firmware version during this video is actually currently set to 2.7.9 so we have a very small screen which is exactly the same as the Cobra Go, and there it is. It's a simple, simple build. You put two screws in for the screen, and you put two screws in either side for the Z axis. The hot end actually just clips on with another two screws. You plug all your cables in and you're pretty much ready to print. Now, if this is your first 3D printer, the build of this is actually very, very simple. Follow the instructions that's on the card. Make sure that it's set on the power supply to your country. Uh, it's 2.30 in the UK here. And basically all we're gonna do is unpack the box. It gives you a range of tools, including spanners, Allen keys, snips, and of course a spare nozzle. And just quickly, my channel sponsor today is PCBWay.com. They are affording me to keep the lights on and the projects rolling out. If you don't already know, PCBWay offer PCB prototyping, assembly, and specialize in various elements of CNC and 3D printing. So on one particular part of the site, they show off a range of projects that other users have submitted to the community. Today, my focus is on Boardfish, who has come up with a wiring management system for their 3D printer. You can order the PCB directly, and the bill of materials and the GitHub support page is also linked on that page. And links, of course, will be in the description below. Thank you once again to PCB Bay. Let's get back to the Neo. And here it is. Well, I've had this for about a week and a half, maybe two weeks now. The idea was to do a live unboxing on a stream. Unfortunately, Anycubic's marketing department changed the dates on me. 
literally about two hours before we were about to stream it, which was a bit of a shame. However, it's given me a little bit more time to play around and tune and play with different things and print different things as well, including this awesome STL Flix Knight, which holds your Xbox or PS5 controller. So let's start at the very beginning then. Uh, this is a, the first owl, in fact, that I printed up on this, which didn't come out too badly at all. Now, I did calibrate the E-steps and I did do a PID tune as well. Uh, then we've got a Joker Batman here as well, which has come off of... Uh, Wexter. This is another Wexter print as well, which came out again really, really nicely. And as I say, this is the STL Flix Knight, and there's a tiny weeny bit of under extrusion on this, um, but you'd have to really, really look into the uh, intricacies of the detail really to kind of see that. But this was printed in uh, Polymaker Teal, and from any cubic is oh, there. You go. It's come straight off the bed. This is a base for something that I'm working on, which hopefully by the end of this video I will have finished, and uh, I'll give you some more information on that shortly. So hopefully, and certainly with any luck, I'll have that finished off by the end of this video. So what do you get for your $249, or possibly less if you check out the links below? There might be a coupon code. You get a 220 by 220 by 250 build volume area and a direct drive extruder with auto bed leveling what you don't get though is a larger style sd card slot which i do think is missing from this printer you get the small style the viper on the other hand does have the big style and i really wish that any cubic would sort of mix that up the other thing that you don't get is a filament runout sensor and for an additional 18 dollars i think any cubic could have probably installed one of those as standard um, in fact, to be honest with you, you could probably make one yourself and maybe I'll look at doing that in a future video. Let me know what you think about this printer in the comments below and hopefully let's check out this print now. Here we go.
You are watching a master at work.